Hey everyone, today we're going to look at a very popular and important topic, herpes simplex virus. Before we jump into its details, let's briefly discuss its family background. The herpes virus belongs to the herpes viridae family and is broadly subdivided into alpha, beta and gamma. HHV stands for human herpes virus. Alpha subdivision contains HHV 1, 2 and 3 which are commonly known as herpes simplex virus 1, herpes simplex virus 2 and varicella zoster virus respectively. Now the beta subdivision contains HHV 5, 6 and 7. Remember HHV 4 has been skipped. Of these HHV 5 is commonly known as cytomegalovirus. In the gamma subdivision we have HHV4 and 8, which are commonly known as Epstein-Barr virus and Kaposi's sarcoma-associated virus, respectively. Let us look at the morphology of this famous virus. It is large in size and is made up of double-stranded DNA, enclosed in an icosahedral capsule. This capsule is contained in a layer called tegument, which is inside a lipid envelope. This envelope has surface glycoproteins that help in its spread. Remember, herpes virus cannot be picked up from inanimate objects. It spreads only through its host, humans. Let's go back to HSV1 and 2. HSV stands for herpes simplex virus. We know that they only affect humans. HSV1 and 2 have a preference for different parts of our bodies. HSV1 causes infection above the waist, while HSV2 causes infection below the waist. The virus reservoir in our bodies is usually in the mucosa and in the ganglia. Herpes infection spreads through close personal contact and sexual activities and is very easily transmitted. After contact with an infectious individual, the virus enters our mucosal epithelial cells. Here, it causes the formation of fluid-filled vesicles which eventually burst to form ulcers. Remember, herpes has been described as a gift that keeps on giving, which means that the infection is extremely hard to get rid of. Even after the ulcers heal, the virus is still very much present in our bodies. It sneakily travels to the nearest ganglia, where it remains in hiding until it gets a chance to cause another bout of infection. HSV1 is primarily responsible for causing gingivostomatitis. This is more common in children. It is characterized by blister-like lesions on the oral mucosa, accompanied by lymphadenopathy. These vesicles have been romantically described as dewdrops on a rose. These vesicles eventually burst to form ulcers with an inflammatory halo. The bursting vesicles leave behind tissue tags, which have been described as moon craters. All of these are extremely important for multiple choice questions. These lesions heal and disappear. But remember, herpes is a gift that keeps on giving. The virus goes and settles in the trigeminal ganglia, waiting for an opportunity to cause the next round of infection. When you catch a cold, this herpes sees it as an opportunity to reappear. Most people experience a tingling sensation along the nerve, followed by appearance of another round of vesicles. This is why these lesions are also known as cold sores. Imagine these vesicles are bursting and forming ulcers that make you feel itchy. You pick on them and then rub your eyes. Unknowingly, you have inoculated the herpes virus in your eyes where it causes keratoconjunctivitis. This is characterized by lid swelling with vesicles. Eye examination reveals dendritic ulcers, repeated attacks of which could cause permanent blindness. Another form of herpes infection is meningoencephalitis. This occurs when the virus is attempting to travel down the nerve and eventually gets to the brain. It causes fever, headache and confusion. It is characterized by focal temporal lesions on scans. Remember, if this is mentioned in a question, they are giving you a hint 
pointing right at herpes. This condition has a very high mortality rate if left untreated. With the administration of acyclovir, the mortality has greatly reduced. Genital infection, which is below the waist, is caused by HSV2. In many cases, it remains asymptomatic. Fever, malaise and myalgia are usually seen. It affects the genitals, that is, the penis in males and the vagina in females. It causes the formation of painful vesicles, which eventually form ulcers. These ulcers should not be confused with a syphilitic chancre. After the lesions heal, remember, herpes is a gift that keeps on giving. The virus remains latent in the sacral nerve ganglia until it gets a chance to cause another bout of infection. Another form of infection is neonatal herpes. This is transmitted from mother to the child through the birth canal. The newborn does not have any immunity, so infection is usually very severe. It may present as disseminated infection with liver involvement that has a very high mortality rate. It can also cause encephalitis and meningitis, which also has a high mortality. In few cases, it only affects the mucosa, that is the skin, eyes and mouth and is characterized by the appearance of multiple vesicles. Remember, this form of infection is caused by HSV2 as it is transmitted from the mother's genital mucosa to the child. This is why it is very important to have a diagnosis for herpes before a mother gives birth to a child. For the diagnosis of herpes, usually the oral clinical lesions are sufficient. To confirm the infection, we take a sample from a freshly opened vesicle and prepare a smear to perform the Zank test. It shows numerous multinucleated giant cells, which on close examination reveal intranuclear inclusion bodies called Lipschultz bodies. Easy to remember by this illustration. Another finding that may be present is syncytium formation, which means multinucleated protoplasmic aggregation of cells without apparent cell outlines. What about the treatment of herpes? Acyclovir is the drug of choice. It is only activated in cells with herpes infection. It targets viral thymidine kinase, which helps the virus replicate. Hence, it has minimal side effects. Alternatives such as famicyclovir and balacyclovir should be used only if resistance develops. I hope this video helps you remember everything important about herpes simplex. Stay tuned for videos on other members of the herpes family. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.